Today's video is going to be on yet again another very impactful figure in the mid to late 2000s era of Nickelodeon, and that girl is none other than Victoria Justice, most known for her role as Lola Martinez in Zoe 101, and as Tori Vega in the insanely popular Victorious. Today I want to get into her career and ask the question, why didn't she blow up the way people thought she would? I actually really loved Victoria Justice as a kid, and I still really admire her today, as she clearly has a very strong work ethic and seems like such a nice person. So, what happened? Let's get into it. So hey everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. If you're new, my name is Julia and I make videos on commentary and pop culture. And I also have a second channel where I speak on lifestyle and my faith. So if you're interested in that, I'll leave a link below to subscribe. And yes, guys, I am back after a one month hiatus. I went on vacation to Florida and I had such a fun time. I love Tampa. Like if you've never been to Tampa, you gotta go to Tampa because everyone wants to go to like Miami and Orlando and everything like that. And those places are cool. Okay, but I'm more of a suburban girl. Okay, I like having the beach right here and then my suburbs right here. So I really enjoyed it. I mean, I had so much fun. I just loved it, okay? So if I move to Tampa, don't be surprised. <laughs> um, but I'm back now and I'm so excited to get into this topic about Victoria Justice. Why didn't she blow up? You know, many of us really love Victoria as a kid. I love Victoria as a kid. So many guys had a crush on her. My older brother is like a year older than Victoria and he loved Victoria Justice when we were kids. And so I don't really understand, like I didn't really understand like why she didn't blow up, but after all my research, it's pretty, pretty interesting stuff. So let's get into it. So as you know, I like to do just tiny little breakdowns of the person before I get into the nitty gritty, but this is very short. So just basically with Victoria's career, Victoria had small roles on several shows such as Gilmore Girls, The Sweet Life of Zack and Cody, and many commercials. I hate to say goodbye because you know, we just met and now it's like you're gonna be leaving and it's, it's okay. So she was really like a child model when she was very young and she spoke about how she enjoyed that and like one day she saw like a kid on a commercial or on a show and she said to her mom, she's like, I could do that, I could do that. And none of her family was in show business or the entertainment industry. So she was really the first one and the guinea pig for the rest of her family. So she really was excited and she was just really um, hopeful and excited and ready to just kind of get into the industry. So fast forward to Zoe 101, so she landed the role of Lola Martinez, and she actually said she used to watch the show, she watched the first season, she loved it, she was like, oh my goodness, this looks so fun to be with all your friends, all your peers, being on this really cool show with this, you know, the beach and everything like that. So she was a fan of the show, and when she heard they had a casting call for a new roommate, she jumped on the opportunity, and she was so excited, and she really enjoyed it. She said that was one of the best roles of her life, and she actually knew Alexa Nicholas, because they, their parents had known each other, so I'm gonna get into like the whole Alexa Nicholas thing later in the video, but basically um, Victoria like loved Zoe 101 and she said it was like such a great part of her career. Victoria then went on to Victorious as the title character of the show. Um, a majority of the storylines revolved around her and she was a seemingly normal girl around a bunch of wacky characters while also wanting to be a movie star. And so basically Dan Schneider saw that Victoria had a lot of talent, not just her acting talent, but her singing and her dancing talent. And so he really wanted to funnel her into her own little show. You know, around this time, a lot of like teen starlets were really big, like Selena Gomez, Miley Cyrus, Demi Lovato. And so Victoria was just another one of those people. She was really, I guess, like Nickelodeon's new vehicle if you will. So where the problem started. So for many people, this is where the problem started for Victoria Justice. Being on Victorious was really the start of her problem. Uh, many people felt that Victoria's character Tori was really bland and uninteresting, and they felt that her vocal ability was nowhere near her co-stars Ariana Grande and Liz Gillies. Basically, yeah, like this is where a lot of people feel like things started to go south for her because she was on a show where the side characters were outshining her in terms of acting chops and singing ability. I think a lot of people felt that Victoria's character was drowned out. Now for me, I don't really have like a strong opinion. I will say that I think Ariana and Liz were better or stronger vocalists than Victoria, but I still think Victoria was a great vocalist regardless. And you know, as for her character, I didn't really feel any ways about her character. I mean, I, I think for me, like I was young and so I loved watching people on one show move to another show. Like it was the same with Miranda Cosgrove. So in a way I was very indifferent about her character because I was very biased for her. 
if that makes any sense. Like, I don't know if that makes sense, but it's kind of like, I didn't really have an opinion here or there about her character because I was like, oh, it's Victoria, so I'm gonna like it anyway. Whether I find a certain episode boring or what have you. But that was just my personal opinion. So I feel like her character was kind of there to offset the other characters. I feel like they definitely could have made her character more interesting. Um, but yeah, I kind of feel like she was there to serve as a balance, but I felt like Avin Jovia's character was the most pointless. He literally did nothing except look cute. And I mean, he was cute, but like, come on, they could have done more with him. They could have added some more sauce to that guy. So, of course, this point about her being the more inferior when it came to music kind of goes into her first shot at music. Her first shot at music didn't really go too well for her, but I'm going to dig into that later in the video. So another aspect of this was that there was a lot of controversy surrounding the ending of Victorious, and I remember this briefly, vaguely, but I remember it, all this drama. So let me kind of break it down a little bit where all this drama with Victorious and the ending and da 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 came from. So according to Ariana Grande's old Ask FM, and yo, remember Ask, do y'all remember Ask FM, bro? Like I was on Ask FM all the time. A lot of my kids in my school used to have Ask FMs and I was a weirdo and I would stalk some of their Ask FMs, especially people I didn't really like. Ask FM was a very interesting time in the internet age. Ariana Grande was on her Ask FM and someone basically blamed her for the ending of Victorious, saying like, oh, you wanted to work on your solo career. You wanted to work on your music. That's why Victorious ended. And then Ariana told fans that the show ended because someone, and many people picked this up to be Victoria Justice, um, Victoria Justice wanted to go on a solo tour, therefore the show couldn't continue. And I think around this time, Victoria Justice was on a solo tour with Big Time Rush. A lot of people put two and two together and was like, oh, she's talking about Victoria. And so Victoria then tweeted and quickly deleted, um, some people would throw someone that they consider a friend under the bus just to make themselves look good. Hashtag stop being a phony. Hashtag if they only knew. So that's very interesting. To be honest, um, about that last part, that last hashtag, if they only knew, it makes me wonder what Victoria meant by that. Like, did she mean like, if they only knew the real story, if they only knew about Ariana? I'm not trying to like start beef again. Like this was like 10 years ago, but it, it was just very interesting that she made that statement and then deleted it, you know, because she probably realized that it added fuel to the fire and that, oh man, Victoria's fan base and Ariana's fan base are feuding and da 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 da. So really messed up really stupid there was also another layer to ariana and victoria's apparent feud feud so i put feud in quotes because it just seems like a lot of this was just a huge misunderstanding in regards to how victoria's ended and i feel that ariana had no intentions of targeting victoria she never explicitly came out and said i wasn't talking about victoria but I think it's kind of alluded through her responses that she didn't mean to target Victoria, but for some reason just wouldn't make it plain. I don't understand. So basically in an interview with Seventeen Magazine, Ariana claimed that she was bullied on set. This was in 2013 when this magazine spread came out. And basically she talked about being bullied on set and that she always tried to impress this person and there was nothing she could do to make this person like her and da 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 da. And a lot of people assumed that it was Victoria. And so everyone thought, it was Victoria who did this and Victoria got tons of hate for this and Victoria ended up setting the record straight on the Meredith Vieira show so I'll play that clip here. So basically there was an article in Seventeen magazine where she had said that she was bullied on set and the magazine basically alluded to it being me. Um, and then so once the article came out actually before it came out she texted me privately and she was like Oh my gosh, I am so sorry. You know how the media like twists words. I was not talking about you. Obviously, like I was talking about one of um, someone on Broadway that I had worked with. And but once it got out there, like everyone thought that I was this bully and that I was mean to her, which couldn't be further from the truth. Like, it was just this ongoing thing. And then people were blaming me, saying that I was selfish for going on tour and that I was the reason why Victorious was canceled, which, first of all, couldn't be further from the truth because I am not a Nickelodeon executive. I have absolutely no power over whether or not the show continued on. And a lot of the other cast members didn't want to go on a Victorious tour anyway. So it wasn't, it was just kind of unfair. And it was this whole thing. And, and hopefully now that she's talked about it, I've talked about it, there, there's no feud. We can put this behind us now and we can practice what Frozen preaches, my friends, and let it go. To let the it go. All right. So I feel really bad because again, like Ariana was talking about someone on Broadway. 
I just feel really bad because Victoria got so much flack and so much hate for this when it really had nothing to do with her. It had no this situation was nothing, not even like an inch near her. And everyone made it out as if she was this bully. She was this horrible person. And she really had to deal with that. And that's why I kind of go back and say that I wish Ariana had made it a little more clear, you know, that I'm not talking about Victoria. Um, so I'm going to go into Ariana's response on Tumblr here. So Ariana wrote a statement on Tumblr saying, it's my responsibility to clear up the drama today. I was misquoted in an interview and I've been very upset and disappointed all day. I was asked about bullying and I thought I'd share some of my personal experiences so that I could share how I overcame it with my fans and hopefully be a help to the people who look up to me and dealing with being bullied. However, unfortunately, I was a little too vague in my interview and the conclusions were drawn and fingers were pointed. My years filming Victorious were actually some of the happiest of my life and that cast is family to me. The stories I was sharing were actually from 2008 when I was on Broadway. It was an exp amazing experience, but a tough time for me. Please, please don't send hate to anyone. It's undeserved. The point of answering the question in the first place was to help those of you who are dealing with bullying not to start drama. I apologize for the commotion. Love you guys very much. Thank you for being here for me and for supporting me. Like I said, I'll stick to my original point. Had she just said Victoria's name, I think that would have put a lot of the rumors to rest. I, I don't understand why she was vague. I'm not trying to come for Ariana. I'm just saying that, you know, if you want to squash something, you, you know, if she had said Victoria's name, I think that would have squashed things a lot earlier. But it's very clear that she did not mean Victoria. It's very clear that fans were stirring things up for no reason. And I honestly feel bad for both of them because I think they both were put in a very uncomfortable position. And at the time, Victoria and Ariana were like 20, 21 right? Yeah. Yeah. They were like 20, you know, they were very young still. And it's like having to already navigate being child stars and then being young adults and then dealing with all this drama. It's like, in a way it's like, yo, how do I diffuse this? You know what I mean? So I feel, feel bad for both of them, but you know, it's just really petty drama. Then let's get into this wild, I think we all meme. One thing you don't know about Ariana Grande is that she literally sings everything. Like yes. she's, she's starting to forget how to talk in her own voice because she sings everything. And that's so true, Liz. You sing a lot too. Like, I, especially during the rehearsal. We all sing. Yeah, yeah, I guess that's true. So if you don't really understand the context of that, you know, basically the context of that meme or that statement was that, you know, they were talking and Victoria said, oh, I think we all sing, which I think she was just trying to say, like, we're all singers. We all do the same thing. It's not just like one person. And people took that as her being jealous of Ariana. They took her as being like trying to take all the spotlight, trying to sound like the best and things like that. And it really became a meme. And so eventually Victoria responded through a tweet and said, I think we all have better things to do than dredging up seven year old non-existent drama. That said, I'm kind of excited to finally be a meme. Um, gotta be honest, I think Victoria took the whole thing like a champ because, um, you know, I think honestly, I'd be really annoyed. I don't know. I'm, I'm just gonna be honest. Maybe I'm a stickler. Maybe I got a stick up my butt, but I never thought the meme was funny because I always felt like the context, I'm like, that's not even what she meant. So that makes the joke not really funny. Like I get that's how a lot of memes are, but there was just something about that one where I was just like, it's not funny. Like y'all are trying to make her seem like she's jealous and she's not. It just, it just, it just was, it's just corny. Like that, that joke's corny. Like of all the memes in the world, there's so much, so many better memes y'all could have made of her. Y'all could have made a, me a meme of her on Victorious. Y'all could have took like a take where she looked awkward and made that a meme, but not nah, you made her saying, I think we all sing as a meme. Come on y'all, internet do better. Y'all are good, y'all are great, but y'all need to do better. Cause that wasn't even funny. I didn't think that meme was funny. And yes, I'm the counsel for what memes are funny. Yes, we have to go through, just kidding. <laughs> so fast forward to the past two years, Victoria and Ariana have publicly supported each other and their endeavors. Um, and they seem to be really cool and cordial. And when they were on the Victoria's reunion together in 2020 over Zoom, someone actually defended Victoria in the IG comments when people tried to use the I think we all meme um, against her, which I think show just how silly their feud was and how it was fueled by fans and that there was never really a feud so i i think that was very admirable victoria to come to Vic uh, ariana to come to victoria's defense and um i think yeah they're very supportive of each other they're supportive of each other's music they're supportive of each other's endeavors and i think that is very very um very you know cool it's very cool you know they're grown women now they're not five they're not 20 they're almost 30 like these girls are pushing 30 they're gonna be 30 next year 
they don't got time for this no more <laughs> from drama from when they were like college age basically all right so let's quickly get into victoria's failed music career her first shot at music and how it basically failed so when victoria's closed out in february 2013 victoria justice was primed to be the starlet the next huge pop starlet Around this time, her co-star Ariana Grande had dropped her single The Way, which did incredibly well with her already large fan base with Victorious. And oh my gosh, it's so crazy thinking back. I remember when The Way first dropped. I remember during that summer, I like listened to The Way and I was also, I listened to like one K-pop song. I, I'm not into K-pop y'all, but I was into this one song. It was to anyone, I don't care. <laughs> I, those two songs were on repeat that entire summer. I remember it like it was yesterday. I don't understand why, but I just loved it. <laughs> so people expected Victoria to outdo Ariana because you know how the industry is. They want to pit two people against each other. You know, Victoria and Ariana were in the same show. They're the same age. You know, like it was, this is just what Hollywood does. And so a lot of people expected Victoria to outdo Ariana, given that she'd been on Nickelodeon since the mid 2000s on Zoe 101. And she also appeared on many other Nick shows. She was in Spectacular. She was very much everyone knew Victoria and she was basically the top dog at the time. This is even proven to be more true by the fact that some of Victoria's songs on the Victoria's cast that she performed were peaking on the Billboard Hot 100 and these songs included Begging on Your Knees, Freak the Freak Out, and Best Friend's Brother, which Y'all, the Victoria's soundtrack is great. My favorite Victoria's song is Songs to You. That's my favorite song. I actually love that song. Like when that episode came out, I was lit. That was a great song. Victoria's single Gold only had 33,000 downloads a year after its release versus Ariana's song The Way, which had more than 2 million. So, you know, a lot of people just kind of were like, you know what, that was a flop. It was an afterthought. And, you know, a lot of people think that the reason why Gold didn't do very well was because it didn't really set Victoria apart. Victoria didn't really have a very distinct image besides being like the good girl, you know what I mean? And I feel like a lot of people felt that it sounded very generic and it was very bland and it wasn't really original. Whereas Ariana, on the other hand, and I don't want to compare them. This is just what people's observations have been. And even like these news outlets like Billboard and stuff, they, you know, see how Victoria or Ariana had like the ponytail. She had like a distinct style. She was moving from being goody to like more sensual, which is what the industry likes. And so a lot of people felt that um, Victoria wasn't really distinguishing herself enough. Again, I respect Victoria for not wanting to have like a super sensual image. That doesn't seem to be her style even now. Uh, at the end of the day, they're both very successful women, but it's just very interesting that gold really didn't do what people thought it would do. So I want to quickly get into the bullying accusations by Alexa Nicholas. So I wanted to add this because while I don't think it had anything to do with her career not being successful, I think it's still something to note. So Alexa Nicholas was bullied on the set of Zoe 101 and has been very vocal over the past few years about what she endured on the set. And majority of the castmates spread rumors about her and ostracized her. Victoria was included in this. And Alexa cited that her and Victoria were good friends. You know, they knew each other. Their parents knew each other. They were very good friends. They had fun together. They did so much together. But then they got into a dispute over a boy one day. And then I guess Victoria just turned on her and started gossiping about her and started making all these rumors about her. And it was just really horrible. I was friends with Victoria Justice because... Victoria and I have known each other for a long time because our parents knew each other. So we were, we were really close. And I was like, yeah, I finally have a friend on set. And like me and Victoria were like super close, like every day hanging out, we had sleepovers. And I was like, yeah, I finally got, <laughs> we're finally going to movies. We're talking about boys. We're like doing all the things that I re <laughs> sounds silly. <laughs> We were finally doing the things that, like, I wanted to be doing at that age, you know? And we got into, like, a weird dispute. Like, I don't even know. I think it was about a boy. It was hilarious. And I wasn't even arguing with her. It was just, like, something weird happened one day. And all of a sudden, I got to set. And it was bad. Like, she was whispering to everybody and just saying things about me and not being friends with me anymore. And I was like, oh, no. This is going to be even worse than it was before. And I was so scared. But I was like, okay, whatever. Everyone told me to be professional. Like that's what they and I think that's really sad because, I mean, again, they were 12 and 13 at the time. So I'm not going to knock that over Victoria. And like I said, Victoria seems to be a very nice person. But I also have to say that I don't really understand, like, why, like, kids like to bully. Like, you know, like, because for me, like, I was never... And most of my friends, we weren't bullies. We were just chilling. We were just playing our DSs, drawing. I'm not a good drawer, so I didn't really draw, but I like, I watched people draw. I watched it. <laughs> that's
that's why sometimes I feel very, very torn about bullying. First of all, bullying is never going to stop. That might be a hot take or unpopular opinion, but bullying is never going to stop. As long as people continue to be people, bullying is not going away. I feel like we just need to know how to deal with it and how to stand up for ourselves and how to mitigate and how to lessen intense situations. I just think it's really sad, um, but I'm hoping that Victoria and Alexa reconcile behind the scenes because, you know, they were good friends. And so I think that there's history there. So, you know, it's, um, it's very sad, but yeah. All right, so let's get into Victoria's current career. So her career throughout the mid 2010s up to now. So Victoria has had a few notable roles throughout the 2010s, including her role as Lindy Sampson on MTV's Eye Candy, which only lasted a season, which is criminal because that was good. I, it was cool to see her in a very like serious role. I watched it like five years ago, I think. So I don't really remember it, but I just remember Victoria being more serious in that. And that showed her range, I think, as an actress. And I think it was really cool. So you know, they canceled that, which is lame, but she was really great in that. And she also starred in the film The Outcast and in a Fox musical film called The Rocky Horror Picture Show. And she also recently, more recently, starred in a Netflix film, Afterlife of the Party. And as of yesterday, as I'm filming this video, her trailer for her new film, A Perfect Pairing, dropped on Netflix's YouTube channel. So she's in a lot of new roles. And I think that's really exciting because I think she's a great actress. I think she does the light comedy and like the rom-com type thing, which is what A Perfect Pairing is. I think she's perfect for that because I think she has that goofiness, but also that like gracefulness and I don't know I, I'm very excited to see like where her career goes and I'm really hoping she blows up because you know she's still very young she's only 29 so she has a lot of time still and she looks very young she could pass for like 25 so I, I just think that she is I think she's a really talented actress and she also released a single so um, yes the song is called treat treat myself and I think that song was pretty good you know I listened to it like a year ago or two years ago and I thought that was pretty good as well I definitely think that she is going to have a very bright future she already has a really bright future and you know I'm really I think it's still sad what happened to her in like the mid-2010s people accusing her of being a bully all these horrible things but um I think now I think her and Ariana are both great talents and I think they both you know, are great in their own right and people don't need to compare them. You know, I just think people need to let Victoria do her. And yeah, I think she's going to do a lot of great things in Hollywood. And I think she's really going to take the Hollywood scene by storm in time. So yeah, um, that's kind of my breakdown of Victoria Justice's career, kind of everything that went on with her. I hope you guys enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it. Um, I always thought that Victoria was just a great talent and, um, you know, she's unproblematic. So Hey, so again, yeah, hope you guys liked it and I hope you stay tuned for more of my content. All right, so thank you guys again. Bye.